Hey everybody, uh, my name is Greg. I work at Voku where I do JavaScript and HTML5 training. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Flexbox. A little while ago I wrote this very long, very technical and detailed article about Flexbox. Uh, that's probably the best resource if you want to really understand it inside and out. But I want to show you today just a little bit about you know the concepts and the high level what can do for you and um, just how does it work. So. If you're not familiar with Flexbox, it's a new layout mode in CSS3 that makes it easier to make complicated layouts for applications. Uh, CSS originally was just for little documents. It wasn't really <coughs> designed for the really responsive, flexible, grid, cool stuff we're doing today. So here we have an example of something that's really easy with Flexbox that might be a little tricky using traditional techniques. This content really has no special markup, no special CSS. There's one property being used here. Each of these rows is in a flex container, and that container has the property display flex. And as you see, it is very flexible. The content is what's determining how these things are being displayed. You're probably looking at this thinking, oh, I could do this with tables, but you know how tables are. They're too much markup, and they can be a little difficult to style at times. And you might say, oh, I can do this with percent, but in that case, if your content changed, you'd have to change your style sheets, and that's just annoying to maintain, especially if somebody is maintaining it that isn't the, you know, someone's writing content, somebody else is writing CSS. Here's another example that shows that Flexbox is concerned with what to do with free space. This window is pretty big right now, so these three columns have the property flex one, which means the ratio is one to one to one of the free space. What happens if we shrink them down? Well, here it's small enough that you can see the ratio is now something else. That we don't really have extra space, so Flexbox determined that this pink column needed more space than these ones just because of the size of the content. If you're going to do this exact thing, with traditional techniques, you probably would need to use media queries and have different styles depending on the browser size or something really uh, convoluted like that. And once again, if your content changed, your style sheets would have to change. Here's another example. Um, this is a little widget I made. You probably wouldn't do something exactly like this <laughs> in a real website, but you would use these techniques. The thing that's nifty here is that, you know, once again, it's flexible. I mean, it's called Flexbox. <coughs> But the cool part is that these collapsed columns have a fixed width of 1 EM because you know that's the font height. And this expanded black element doesn't have a width set. It's just automatically getting the rest of the space in the flex box. Mixing flexible and inflexible elements is kind of tricky. You can't have fixed widths and percents mixed together as you may have found in the past. Um, it's the kind of thing that people often fall back on using JavaScript for, and using JavaScript for layout is just a nightmare. In this example, we're doing something a little interesting. We're using justify content and align content to determine how items are being positioned in their container. Justify content and align content are basically the same thing, just vertically and horizontally, where, as you can see, these elements are centered in the row and there's space around them vertically. Let's look at the actual market for this. Here's the container. It has a min height at 600 px. And the justify content, or how items are positioned on the row, is centered. And the align content, which is how the rows are aligned in their container, is space around. Let's try something different. What about space between? Let's change these both to space between. So what did we just do? Basically, we're putting as much space between the items as possible. Everything is pushed out toward the edges of the container. And I'm not even sure he would do this with that flex box. And you saw there was a min height. As we get smaller, the um, Container is getting bigger, and we're putting less space between the items because there's less space in the container for them. 
That's all I want to show you today. If you want to understand how all this stuff works, definitely check out my blog post on the Boku blog, as I mentioned. And also, I recently made a site called LearnLayout.com, which is an overview of CSS layout techniques in general. It's really useful if you aren't familiar with how to do it, and if you are already an expert, you might still pick up a new trick or two. My name is Greg, I work at Boku, and I hope you have a great day.